put into version control typically. So you know, there would be less uh, unversioned files and it will just keep on coming again and again. So uh, how do you start using Git? Uh, on Linux, you can just install Git, the Git package. Every distribution has clear instructions on how to do that. It doesn't take long. On Windows, uh, there is this msys git. So it installs the git executable and a bunch of uh, basic Linux tools and gives you a Linux shell in Windows. So uh, you can go, go into your code folder and at least do the basic git stuff there. You don't get full Linux functionality, but you at least get enough so that you can do uh, anything related to git. There are graphical tools, git GUI that comes with msys git and tortoise git. This, uh, I mentioned this because uh, they have Tortoise SVN, which is like a, a, a very high quality tool that I've been using in the past. But this, this Git version is not from the, from the same developers. It's a port and it's still uh, not mature. Really. But it has a, a I mean, the, the diff tool, the merge tool that they have, that's, that's kind of the best that you have a graphical tool. So once you've installed it and in, uh, you are in your Git shell, you would want to configure it with your username and your email. And this is important because anytime you make a commit and it's logged into uh, you know, in the log file, uh, it saves your name and email address there. So if you have the wrong information, it will just it'll confuse anybody who's going through the logs later on. So that's something you do quickly. Uh, Every time you commit, you're asked to add some comments saying what what you what changes did you make. So it'll open up your editor, default editor or whatever. But you can configure it to the one you like. So I, I, I set mine to VI. Once you've done this, your your Git environment is all set, and then you can just start using the other Git command. Now, uh, Git repositories they reside within the code. So if you have your project folder with all these source files. There will be another subfolder dot git which will store all the whole repository. So now um, this you know this because in, in SVN you have your working copy in one folder and the repository is, is in, in in a different location. So this is a bit different than that. And sometimes you have to think whether you want to have separate repositories for separate projects or you want to put everything in a single repository, so you have to think about this uh, beforehand. So, uh, say you have a folder with these source code files and no Git repository yet. So all you need to start using Git is just issue this command, git init. It will uh, initialize the repository and <coughs> it wouldn't do anything. It will just create an empty blank repository. It will not add, automatically add your source files. I can uh, quickly start with this. I'll, I'll, I made this empty folder and I, I'm going to copy two source files. And once uh, this is Windows, I'm using uh, msys git. So it, it adds a context menu entry git bash here or git GUI here. Uh, I'm going to just use the bash, the, the shell. So once you do that, you are in that folder and I can do that git in it. It creates that uh, repository. It, it's a, it's a hidden folder, so you probably cannot see it, but it's there, and it has all your. Uh, so it's there, but uh, it's it's hidden, and this is where all your history and everything will be stored. Now, and you can check the status of your repository by this command git status. So. Right now, nothing is, is in the repository, so it says untracked files or unversioned files. So it found two files that look like source code, but they're not into the version system yet. They're, they're just lying there. You will have to manually add them. So the command to do that is git add and the file name. Uh, and like I said, we do not add object files. We do not add uh, intermediary files or even the exe files. You're expected to build them again. So I'm going to add all these source files. And now, if I run the status command, 
So it added these two new files to my repository and but they're still not in, in version control yet. In, in Git, you have a temporary staging area. So once once you've uh, picked out the files that you intend to commit, uh, it's just like you're still allowed to make changes to the selection. You're still allowed to remove some of them. You're still allowed to add some of them. And then you would make the final commit using this command. So uh, right now, only uh, we've only selected two files, and they've been added to the staging area, and they will be committed on the next commit. So this is the command, git commit, the dash m, this is like uh, the comment that has to go with every commit. You cannot make a commit without adding a comment to it. So th this is the first import. I'm just going to get the comment. So if, if I ignore, if I omit this switch, it will ask me, it will open up my editor and it will ask me to enter the comment here. So I'm going to say initial port and save it. And now it has been committed to the master branch. So everything is up to date. There is nothing to commit. Everything is clean. Now uh, we, can, we can go ahead and make a change to a file and then uh, commit those changes. So this is like the initial version of our code. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to make a, I add a few lines here, let's say. So I've modified the file but I've only modified it in my working copy. And it's not even in the staging area. If I issue a commit command again, this file will not be committed because um, nobody has told Git to do so. You have to, uh, so let, let's see the slide. If you, if you change multiple files, it, Git doesn't assume that you want to record all those changes in your commit. You have to specify which ones you, you're gonna add. So you'd use the add command that you used to initially add them again and uh, but uh, most of the time we 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 do want to commit all our changes, so we can use use git commit with the dash a switch. So it will auto. It will, we can skip that step. We can just use git commit icon a and comment here. And now it has been committed. I should have done a status before that. So. But never mind. So now you can. Um, now, um, why did we do this? Did we just do it to make a backup copy? Well, um, it has uh, a few, uh, you know, a little more functionality than that. It lets you do a diff between the current version and the previous version. It will, it will pinpoint the exact lines that were changed and what was changed. So you can. Um, Unix already has this diff command, but uh, for here you have to use the, the diff command built into git. So you do git uh, diff. If I just do this, all of my code is up to date, so it's not going to show any changes. But if I do git head, so it, it, it's showing so the text in white that's like uh, it's either some. Um, you know the file name and stuff, or it's the unchanged code. The stuff that's in, yeah, this is like the unchanged stuff. The stuff that's in green, that's any new code that you've added. And if you've deleted any code, it 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 comes up with a minus sign and in red color, so you know what what changes you made. And looking at the command, you said uh, diff my working copy, the code that I have in my directory, with head. Okay. So what's head? Head is the head is, is just a label. It's like a uh, yeah. It's it's a built-in. It's a uh, it's like a it's, it's it's a name given to the most recent commit that that led to this working copy. So if you so assuming a simple workflow where you're the only guy, you made ten ten commits. So the tenth commit is what head is pointing to. That's that's your head. That's where you're working on, and all of your changes are there. 
and you can use head till the n and it will go back those many commits down the branch so you can you can compare your your current version with any previous version by this command and this is just a a technicality you usually wouldn't need to do this because you would you wouldn't stage the files uh, you would just use the dash a switch or something like that. So uh, now this was like you know you are making changes to your code and it's 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 being saved in the version control system. Why do you need to create branches? Um, if you're working alone, then maybe not. You can just keep on working on the master branch. You just um, you know nobody's going to come and look well, how you're doing your stuff, and that's not a problem. But uh, say I mean even if you're working alone and you're working on on two different things, maybe I'm adding a uh, a new print function maybe and a new file writing function so they are fairly independent and either of the, if I maybe finish just one of the changes first I can still you know see it run and it, it should work fine and the other one is like a, a totally different thing so it would make sense if you put those in branches so that way you can start working on both of them and even if the other other version is, is, is not uh, uh, you know, good enough to compile. It has uh, it has incomplete code. You can still uh, continue working on the other branch and, and compile it and keep on working on that. And the other thing is, if you are experimenting a lot, um, if if you do all those experiments on the master branch, they will just be there in your history of commits, and it's it's not really a problem, but if one day you want to go back and go through the log and see what changes have been making you, it will just add clutter to your log file. And if, if you're working alone, I mean, uh, there is no reason not to make a branch before making changes because um, there are no chances of any conflicts, at least with other people. So you should be okay. So to create a branch, you just say git branch and the branch name. And uh, so it, it kind of creates like a new uh, a new branch in your graph, but it doesn't switch to it. Uh, you're still on the master branch, and any commits you make would still be on the master branch. You have to manually switch to the new branch with the checkout command. So you say git checkout the branch name, and now you're on on this new branch that you just made. And any changes you make, they would just go along this new trajectory in a new branch and there is a shortcut to do both of them together you say git checkout dash b branch name uh, and then you can uh, you can make go ahead and make some changes and then you can merge them back into the master branch i can uh, quickly do a demo but it's already 30 minutes Let me do get um, check. So I created a new branch and I switched to it. And now I'm going to make some changes to the hello world. Uh, and delete this line. So now this this commit is going on this new branch. It's not going on master. And, uh, Uh, the, the, this msys git and even the Linux version comes bundled with this uh, git, um, this kind of a, a, a GUI tool. So it, it shows you graphically uh, what your commits were. So this was my first commit, and then I made a second commit, and that was on my master branch, right? And then I created a new branch. I mean, this was my, this was the point where I created the branch. So this is where. It branched off into my branch, and this is my latest change. Now, master and my branch are different now. I mean, if 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 I if I go ahead and make some more changes on the master branch, you would be able to see that tree structure, but you don't see it right now. It's just it just tries to um, show everything in a straight line. But, uh, 